morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining class. Shalom to all of you. Uh, warm welcome to all our in-person students and our online students. Thank you, Ravali, Nina, John, Jackin, and Shiv Kumar for joining class this morning. And also um, welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to the lecture um, later on. Okay, before we continue looking at uh, the parables, stories that Jesus um, taught us, we all love stories, so today will be more like a story time and just learning the truths from those stories, deep revelation, revelatory truths from the stories. Uh, we'll just pause for a word of prayer, so can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Prince, you'll pray. Thank you. Amen. We were looking at uh, chapter 7, Kingdom Parables, okay, and um, we were looking at some of the important uh, truths about why Jesus spoke in uh, parables, okay. So we looked at John chapter 3 verses 9 to 13, and we tried to lay a foundation um, about why Jesus spoke in parables before uh, we explored uh, some uh, the first parable that is a parable of the sower or before we look we look at the parables that Jesus taught uh, we thought we will lay a small you know, foundation so we looked at John chapter 3 verses 9 to 13 where Jesus is having a conversation with whom Nicodemus and so what was the concern that Jesus was raising with Nicodemus Okay, but what was the, the concern? Of course, he's sharing the truth with him, but what was the concern that Jesus had? He's sharing with him some important truths about the kingdom of God, but what was the hindrance in the conversation? He was not able to understand the, the, the teachings, okay? So Jesus is telling him that I'm explaining you things you know, uh, from the natural and you're not able to understand it. So if I'm telling you things in the, from the spiritual world, from the world I come from, from the kingdom of God, from the kingdom of heaven, how are you going to understand it? Okay. So then he goes on and we look at certain truths that um, uh, uh, in, in Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. Okay. Uh, why Jesus spoke in? parables why did jesus speak in par parables okay so what does he tell his disciples he says jesus says that to the disciples the mysteries of the kingdom of given uh, kingdom of heaven has been given to them okay which means what yes the grace has been given for them to understand the mysteries of the kingdom okay so this he is talking in context of the disciples he's telling the disciples that for to you has been given the mysteries of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 verses 10 to 17 meaning what is he meaning by this he's saying the grace of god has been given to all of you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of god but what did he say regarding the general public they have ears but they cannot hear they have eyes but they can, can't see they have hearts but they cannot perceive or they cannot understand the mysteries of god okay so how is going jesus going to explain to them 
the truths, the mysteries, the revelation of the kingdom of God to them through the parables. Okay, so in order to bridge this gap, okay, in order to communicate to them the mysteries of the kingdom, Jesus is saying, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to speak to them in parables. And what is parables? Okay, earthly stories. He's taking stories from our world and helping us see things from his world. Okay, so he's taking uh, uh, scenarios or um, case stories, so to say, from our world that we can see, that we relate to, that we can understand. And using those stories, he's going to reveal to us some spiritual truths or the important revelations of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Or he's helping us see things in his world even as we look at things from our world. So even as we look at things in the natural, he's going to reveal the spiritual truths or the spiritual things to us. Okay. And another thing he pointed out in the same uh, Matthew chapter 13, he says, for whoever uh, has to him more will be given and he will have a and he will have abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him okay so what did jesus mean by saying this we looked at this last week just doing a recap he says for whoever has to him more will be given and he will have abundance but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. So what is Jesus trying to say here? Can you take the mic, please? Okay. Uh, whatever the Lord is revealing to us, we should build on it. We should give attention to that so that the Lord will give you more. If you are taking it lightly, the chance of <laughs> yeah what is given to you will the little that is given to you will be taken away so he says in the kingdom of god you know if you have more and you're going for more or you're desiring for more then what will you have abundance okay if you have little and you're not doing anything about that little whatever little you have even that you would lose it so jesus is saying here's something very important about the kingdom of God. And he's talking about this in the context of revelation. Okay. The context here is about revelation. Okay. It's not talking about uh, your finances or your property or uh, uh, the money or the son. He's talking here about revelation. And he's saying all this is concerning in the context of understanding the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Okay. So if you got revelation and you're going after more or you're desiring after more then god is going to give you abundance but if you're not doing anything with what you have already received what you have okay with the little revelation that you got then you are at a risk what is the risk you cannot get more but what little you have you risk losing even that little that you have okay so we need to take, you know, concerning the revelation, we need to take the mystery of the kingdom of God very, very seriously. So God, when God reveals to us truths, a revelation from his word, mysteries from his word, we need to take it very, very seriously. Because if you take it seriously, then we are going to, and we want more, we desire more, then we will have abundance. Okay. And then what else, what does, does he say? If you take these mysteries, and you desire for more, you understand these mysteries, you're going to receive abundance. What else is are you going to receive, he says? What does he tell the, the general crowd? You know, I speak to them in, in parables. If they get to understand what I'm saying, and he says they get past their blind eyes and their deaf ears, and their hearts, and they're able to understand and get what I am saying, what will happen to them? They will be healed, yes, they will be converted, they will, be, uh, they will repent, they will experience my healing, they will experience my salvation. So what is the point here? 
the point here is so when you get an understanding of the revelation of god it not only opens your life to receiving more or abundance of it it also opens up your life to the working of god okay so you see how important it is for us to read god's word to understand um you know um and to receive it because only when we read god's word when we understand the mysteries when we receive those truths it's going to convert us it's going to uh, cause us to repent it's also going to bring about salvation it's going to bring about healing and it's also going to open up your life to the working of god okay yeah thank you nina john she says those who appropriate the truth reveal more will be given okay so here we see it's so important for us to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of god understand the secret truths uh, regarding the kingdom of heaven and it's important because we must enter because that must enter in our lives before we can begin doing the work of the kingdom okay um God wants us to invest in understanding the mysteries or the truth in his word okay so we need to get our priority right or we need to put it in right order you know once you get an understanding of the mysteries you pursue the mysteries and when you get the understanding of the mysteries it opens up your life for the saving healing and the del delivering work of the lord jesus christ or the delivering work of god in our life so we need to get our uh, order right or priority right first you need to pursue the mysteries of god you have to understand the mysteries of god and once you get an understanding of the mysteries of god it opens up your life to the saving healing and the delivering uh, work of god in our lives okay and then uh, we looked at the parable of the uh, sorry before that there's another thing that we uh, looked at in matthew chapter 13 okay um uh, what does it say in matthew chapter 13 verses 34 and 35 Can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. Matthew chapter 13, 34 and 35. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. So now the other foundation that we can lay regarding parables is this, that when Jesus was speaking the parables, he was actually doing what? He was fulfilling the prophecies, okay? But what we need to also see is that these parables are now unveiling to us the things that are hidden from the beginning of time, okay? So, yes, he spoke in parables to fulfill the prophecies but what we also need to see is that these parables are now unveiling to us things that were hidden from time past from the beginning okay from the very foundation of the world so within every parable is not just a story that we can enjoy but there is some hidden truth okay deep revelation or deep hidden truth okay so that is what i left you with a challenge last week saying that you know we would have heard these parables many times you know uh, as children even in churches many of them preach these um uh, parables uh, uh, when we were in sunday school we would have colored these parables you know but um this you know but this morning let's look at it in a sense that you know what is the deep revelation or the deep hidden truth that I can receive about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven from these parables. Okay. So we want to get a grip of the mysteries. We want to get a grip of the truth, the hidden truth since the foundation of the world. Okay. And you can tell God, God, open my eyes to see the deep truths in your word. Open my ears to hear what you are speaking uh, and open my heart to understand to perceive the mysteries and how your kingdom is working so that i can receive you know healing wholeness deliverance even as i look uh, and study your 
parable. So the, the intent of this parable, that parables that they're going to study is not just because you have to sit in this course or you have to study this course, but we can look at it differently saying, God, even as I am studying these parables, you know, um, I want to receive your mysteries. I want to understand it so that I can receive healing, so I can receive your deliverance, so I can receive your provision. Okay, so that is the intent with which we need to begin looking at the parables, some of the parables that we will be studying. And that is what we need to uh, go after understanding and also saying, God, I want to experience your working in my life. Okay, so can we do that this morning? Just deep down in our hearts, can we just say that prayer and, um, you know, we can begin looking at the parables. So last week we began looking at the uh, first parable. Okay, what was the first parable? The parable of the sower and the seed. Okay. Now the parable of the sower and the seed is the parable of the kingdom or the king's word. Okay. So the, the seed is the, the word of the kingdom or it is the king's word and is recorded for us in uh, Matthew chapter 13 and also in Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8. So we, we read through Matthew chapter 13 uh, verses 18 to 32 last week. Okay. So Jesus tells uh, the people this parable and were they able to understand the parable? No. Okay. So the disciples come to him afterwards and say, can you please explain the parable of the sower to us because this is the first parable that Jesus is speaking to them and so he goes on to explain the parable of the uh, sower to them okay he says um, in verse 19 let's look at verse 19 can somebody read that please verse 19 when anyone hears the word of the kingdom yeah so here he says anyone who hears the word of the kingdom Okay, so the parable of the sower or the seed is the word of the kingdom. It's the king's word. It is what the king of this kingdom has spoken. It has to do with God's word. And so Jesus is saying, listen, I'm revealing something to you about the kingdom of God. And it is a very familiar story. It's about a farmer going to sow his seeds which i'm sure it's all around them they can see it all around them so he's saying that the parable of the sower has to do with the word of the kingdom the king's word what the king has spoken or the word of the king okay so he says that you know um god's word is the word of the king it's the word of the kingdom and it is his primary way of working in his kingdom so how is what is the primary way that god works in his kingdom is when he releases his word when he speaks his word so he says when the word is spoken when that word is spoken that word can fall on it, the the seed has to fall where on the ground so what is the ground here our hearts okay so he says when he releases his word that word has to come onto the or ground or into the ground which is your heart and my heart okay so when a king wants to do something or he wants to work something what does he do he just releases his word the word of his kingdom and he when he releases the word of his kingdom his intention is that his word will come and fall on the good ground that is our hearts okay but jesus is saying i want you to understand a couple of things i want you to understand a few things even as i release this word even as this word goes forth there are there are some things that will hinder this word which will affect it from you know fulfilling what that word has gone forth and what god has spoken into our lives so the king can speak into our lives but there are some things that can hinder that word from affecting us or hinder that word from coming into fulfillment or hinder that word from coming into its divine destiny and its divine purposes so what are those things the first thing he says is they are the birds of the air okay so he says satan 
is like the bird of the air who comes and takes away that word. Okay, he wants to come and take away that wor word. <coughs> Sorry. Why does he want to come and take away that word? He knows the power of the word. Okay. Purpose in your life. Yes, very good. He does not. He uh, he knows that it'll, it will fulfill the purpose of God in your life. He does not want that word of the king to become an experience in our life. Because when that word comes into our life, we can experience the word in our life. He doesn't want us to experience that word because he wants us to live in his lies. Right? In his lies and his deception. He's the father of lies. If you look at our if I if you look at our own lives, if you examine our own lives, if you examine our own thoughts, most of it is what? We are believing the lie of the enemy. Right? I'm no good, I'm stupid, I'm not intelligent, I can't do anything properly, I always fail, I can't be a good mother, I can't uh, achieve this in life, I've been a failure, you know, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, I'm not a worthy person, I'm not a valuable person, I can't be this, I can't be that, the constant things, I'm always sick, you know, I can never receive healing, I can never do this, no one can speak nicely to me. All of those things are lies of the enemy. So he's he's wanting to just, you know, remove that seed so that we don't experience God's word in our life. Because he knows God's word is powerful. And when that word comes into our life and we understand that mystery, when we receive it, it's just going to be so powerful and his work in our life is totally nullified okay so what will allow satan to rob you of the word that the king speaks over your life is he says you know uh, he comes and takes away that word okay so when you don't understand when does he come and take away the word when you don't understand what god is speaking to you when you don't get the revelation of what god is speaking to you remember you said when you it'll be given to you but if you understand pursue you know um uh, if you get a hold of that revelation you will get more abundance but if you don't whatever you have you risk losing it so this is the risk of losing it because satan will take away that word okay so the important thing is for us not to just read God's word, not just to sit in service and just listen to what the pastor is saying, or not just sit in class here and just attend the lecture, but to understand the deeper truths, understand the mysteries. And that is why you and I need to pray like the psalmist prayed, said, God, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things of your word. Okay, look at what the psalmist says. God, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things or wondrous truths from your word. What does it mean? It means that God, you're telling God, God, I just want to go past the letters that I read. It's not just a ritual that we read God's word every day. So you're saying, God, I just want to go past the letters. That means I just don't want to read what is there. Okay, and make sense of what is there. I want to get a deeper understanding a deeper truth a deep, deeper mystery of what is in it because when i read it when i understand it and i receive that uh, that mystery it will ensure that it will produce what you want to produce in my life okay so it's important that we understand what we are reading and if you don't understand what we are reading what happens satan has the freedom the liberty to come and take away what is soon if you don't act on what the pastor is preaching and teaching in church you don't hold on to it you don't write it down you don't uh, mull on it you don't meditate on it you don't give thought to it satan will come and take away what has been sown that's why if we ask some of us what did you read in your quiet time yesterday we may not remember the full thing why because we just read it for the sake of reading it but we have not kind of understood or we've not meditated on it throughout the day so we have to be like cows why cows 
Yes, they they bring it back, re, regurgitate it, and they bring it back, and they keep on chewing on it and chewing on it and chewing on it and break it, break it, break it, break it down till it's, their stomachs are able to digest. So that is what we need to do, okay? They're reading God's word. There might be something that strikes you, but you need to hold on to it and think about it the entire day. That is what means you're understanding, you're getting deeper into understanding God's truth. And that is when you will receive an abundance of the revelation. So sometimes when you hear men and women of God preaching and teaching, we can think, hey, I read the same passage. I didn't get all of these truths. Where did they get these truths from? It's because they are looking deep into that passage even i'm sure you know you and i when we have to preach god's word we uh, we take a passage and we are trying to understand what should i preach what should i teach you know and then we receive so many truths and you saying hey i never even thought about this i've read this passage so many times okay so because why we are pursuing deeper truths from those passages okay so if you don't do that satan has the freedom to come and the liberty to take away whatever is sown in us okay so you and i we need to pray and say god open my eyes that i can see open my ears that i can hear open my heart that i can understand okay and now we can also pray god remove the sleepy at it sleepy mode that i am in give me freshness of spirit and mind to listen to your truths and to understand your mysteries okay and then he said now there is the word when it comes into your life you know there can also be rocks okay so first we looked at the birds of the air that can come and take it away and then there are rocks that can hinder the word of the king from coming into pass into your life so today the king might be speaking something to you okay the word of the king has come forth okay uh, and it's coming to you okay it could be in a written word what you're reading from god's word it could be a prophecy that somebody is a prophetic word that somebody is speaking to you or it can be the holy spirit that reminds you of some verse or the holy spirit is reminding you of a verse uh, and speaking into your situation or your life in the present okay so the word in different forms of the king is coming to you, but there are rocks in your life, okay, that can hinder this word from being fulfilled. So what are these rocks? What are these rocks? Look at Matthew chapter 13. What does he say there? Verse 20. Can somebody read verse 20? But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yeah, uh, 21 as well. Yet, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Yes. Now he who... So what happens to... Uh, the, the the what is what are those rocks? Tribulations, persecutions, uh, hardships that we go through. Okay, so when this when the seed of, or the word of God comes into your life in any of the forms that we saw, you know, does it bear root? Yes, there is a little root that comes up, but what happens when there is persecution? When there is affliction, when there is hardship, when there is trouble, what happens? What the word that the king has spoken will not allow that word, the, the rocks will not allow that word to affect your life or bring it into fulfillment. It will rob you of that word and that word will become very, very ineffective in your life. Okay, so we need to be careful of the rocks okay there's nothing wrong with the word of the king that has come forth because it is the word of the king it is his word it is full of power it will come to pass because what god says you know he says my word that goes forth from my mouth will not return to me 
void and there's nothing wrong with the word that the king speaks because it is the incorruptible word it is the word that you know uh, abides forever heaven and earth will pass away but his word will never pass away this is incorruptible word it is his powerful word but there are rocks in our life there are afflictions there are difficulties there are persecutions that happens that happens in our life and all around us and that can withdraw that word that can produce in our life okay so we need to be careful that even when we go through difficulties persecutions we should never miss out on the word that god is speaking to us in that situation take hold of it don't look at those mountains those giants those circumstances but hold on to god's promises hold on to god's word okay and then he said listen there are also things called we looked at the birds of the air rocks and then thorns okay thorns are what the cares of this world the deceitful riches the worldly desires the lust for the things of this world and he says you know if you allow these things to creep into your life see i, I uh, creep means what come slowly it comes without you even knowing okay it will hinder the work of the king from being fulfilled in your life okay and then he says finally you know depending on the condition of your heart whether your heart is in a good condition prepared to receive to understand to spend time you know the word of god that comes it takes root and when you receive that word it retains the word will retain in your life when you believe that word it will retain in your life and it will bear fruit okay it will bear fruit 30 fold 60 fold and a 100 fold but that depends on the condition of your heart okay so here is a mystery of the kingdom of god that jesus is revealing how the king works by his words okay so he's basically talking about how the king speaks how the king reveals truths is through the and how he reveals what is going to happen in his kingdom or in our life is through words and then he says you know um how thing what are the things that will choke that word from coming into fulfillment and how we need to be careful okay so if you want god's word to work in our lives he says you know um we need to be diligent sincere to receive okay he says when he speaks to you uh, it is with the intent that he wants to work something in your life okay the word is coming to you it is the word of the king the word of his kingdom and every word that the king speaks into your life or for his kingdom is designed to produce in your life okay but we need to be careful of the birds the rocks the thorns because they have the potential of hindering the word uh, of the king and hindering the word of the kingdom to be fulfilled in our life okay and what does jesus say if you understand this parable what does he say you will be able to understand all other parables what does jesus mean by saying this if you understand this parable you will be able to understand all other parables okay this is a basic foundation this is how the kingdom operates this is how the king uh, works in his kingdom to the word of god okay so parable is all of the seed you need to use a mic yeah if we understand it we can understand he tells if you understand you can understand other parables also maybe like like they will get to know yeah how to take that parable as a word and apply it okay you will understand how to take that parable as a word and understand it okay it's a key to understand all the other parables okay it's a key to understand but what is the key so he's saying if you can understand this natural story it's a natural story that you see 
okay a story from your world and a story from your world that is communicating a powerful truth or a mystery from my world the world that i come from the kingdom of heaven and if you take the word seriously okay then you know what you are able to that you will be able to understand all other parables so if you take the word seriously then you will be able to understand all other parables that jesus says i am going to tell you about so the 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 key point here is we need to take god's word seriously okay because jesus was going to be preaching and teaching a lot of things to them so he's saying everything i'm preaching and teaching is you know truths or mysteries from the kingdom of god and i want you to take those truths of what i am teaching the words that i'm teaching i want you to take it seriously because this is the word of the kingdom this is the way god is going to be working in your life okay and you don't treat the book of uh, the word of god very very lightly okay and if you treat it lightly you're not allowing the king to work in you because he works in you through his word okay which is his seed which he re releases in your life and in my life and we need to take it very very seriously and allow his seed to be sown into our hearts so that we can bear fruit okay then he told another parable about the good seed and the tares in matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 43 okay so can somebody please read matthew chapter 13 Verses 24 to um, 43. Another parable he spoke, uh, he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not uh, sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant, the servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but rather the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard, mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and, re and nest in its branches. In another parable, he spoke to them. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable, he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. Oh, okay. <laughs> the field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The son of man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of the father he who has ears to hear let him hear again the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid and for joy over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant Okay, thank you. So 
Here we see in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. Okay, so he goes on to say another parable. And he says another story uh, with, um, you know, about the kingdom of God. And he's revealing something about this unseen world that Jesus is coming from. And here he's saying, here's what is happening. He says, a man goes out to sow good seed in his field. And the enemy also comes uh, quietly, silently, maybe in the night, and also sows bad seed alongside the good seed okay then all of a sudden the seed sprouts and there is crop that is coming out and what does the man uh, uh, find out he finds good things the good plant growing but he also finds the weeds that are growing alongside the good crop okay so his workers People for working for him come and say, you know, can we go and clean up the field right now? And what does the master say? No, don't do it. Okay. Why shouldn't why shouldn't you pull out the weeds now? It'll also uproot or destroy the, the good crop. Okay. So he says, let them grow together. And at the end of the age, which means what? The harvest time comes. He says, I will send my reapers. And what will my reapers do? They will sort out the good crop from the weeds. And what is going to happen? They will burn up the weeds. Okay. So he says, you know, um, he comes back into the house. And his disciples, were they able to understand this parable? No. Okay. So they come to him and say, please explain to us this parable okay so jesus is saying this is something very familiar story from your world that i've taken okay and they say yes jesus we understand the whole thing about farming okay we understand about you know the 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 weeds and the good crops but what is the spiritual truth that you are trying to convey to us okay so jesus says here is the spiritual truth He's saying the man who sowed good seed is whom? Yes, the son of God or the son of man. And that is Jesus Christ. And who are the good seeds? Yes, we. The sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. So you and I are good seeds. You and I are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. And God has sown us where? In the world. He has sown us in the world. So we need to begin to perceive and we need to begin to look at ourselves as what? As good seed. Yes. As good seed. As sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. As good seed in this world that God has sown us here in this world. Okay. And are we alone in this world? Only good seeds in this world? No. There are also bad seed there is even a devil that is sowing bad seeds which are for the wicked people so we are in the midst of even wicked people okay there, there are wicked people all around but why has god sown us here in the midst of wicked, wicked people to extend his kingdom okay Okay, it's not God who sowed us in the wrong place, okay? But why has God put us here in this world? Why doesn't he take away, take us away? We have to live for God? We have to fulfill his purpose here on earth. What is his purpose? To bring his kingdom here on earth, to usher his kingdom here on earth, make his kingdom manifest here on earth as it is in heaven okay so we have the kingdom mandate on our life what is the kingdom mandate we saw we studied it chapter one and chapter two let his kingdom come his will be done on earth as it is in heaven so we're here to release the kingdom of god amidst a wicked generation okay so we need to see ourselves as sons and daughters of the kingdom of god we need to see ourselves as good seed 
uh, you know, working in um, in an environment that God has put us in. So, you know, whether you are at the workplace, okay, whether you are at home, uh, you know, uh, you are living in a locality, you're living in a community, you're living in an apartment, you know, uh, there are people who are wicked around you, okay? So we don't focus on those bad seeds. We don't focus on the wicked people, but we need to understand why we are here, okay? Why has God placed us at such a time as this in this time and season over here? So even your where you are living, your home, you know, whether you're living in a hostel, but you're living in a, in a locality, God has put you there for a significant purpose and a reason. And what is a significant purpose and reason? To extend his kingdom in that place, in that space, in that environment. Okay. So God wants his kingdom to grow, to thrive, to flourish in the place that he has planted you whether he's planted you in a in the business field you're a businessman businesswoman you're working in a corporate you're working in an office you're a teacher you know you're a preacher you're you know you're a student even as a student god has placed you because he wants you to grow thrive and to flourish in the place that he has placed you okay so we need to see ourselves as good seed yes there are bad seeds that the enemy comes and sows and um but we as sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, you know, we are in a position here to manifest his glory, to manifest his glory so that his kingdom culture, kingdom lifestyle, his kingdom values, his kingdom presence can invade in and through our lives, through the people that we uh, reach out to, through the people that we come to contact in. And then he continues the story. He says, you know, at the harvest time, and what is the harvest time? Resembling here, the end of age. So the reapers are whom? The angels. the angels. They're going to come. They're going to separate the sheep and the goat. They're going to separate the good seed and the bad seed. Okay. They're going to sort it out. And the end is coming. And Jesus says, I will vindicate the good seeds. But the bad seeds will be dismissed. That means they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, and then he uses the same truth, okay, uh, with uh, now not for in farming, but where is this, he uses the same parable, the same truth, and he brings out another story. What is that? Parable of the no, no, not Levin. The same context good seed and bad seed. The same context, he tells another parable. The fishing story, the dragnets, the parable of the dragnet, the fishing story, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 50. Okay. Uh, we'll stop here. We have one more minute. Okay. So he brought up the same truth, brought the same truth using the fishing story, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 47 through 50. 50. Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll continue after the break. <laughs>